Welcome to Speakernomics, the official podcast of the National Speakers Association. I'm Kenneth Kinney, but friends call me Shark. And like you, I'm a professional speaker, and I love listening to Speakernomics. It's the professional speaker show that will help you thrive and grow a speaking business so you too can change the world. One keynote session workshop and speech at a time. And on this episode, we welcome Mike Domish. He makes his life and living as a speaker. He's a CSP, a CPAE Hall of Famer, and he loves to coach and make an impact with other speakers. Mike, welcome to Speakernomics. How are you today? I am doing wonderful, Shark. Thank you for having me here. Absolutely. Now, to all my speaking friends, what is it that we can be told as speakers that stops us from having the biggest impact in most thriving speaking businesses? Whether it's what you can or cannot say from the stage or what you script, whether you can sell or not, what is it that's BS and what is it that's the truth in your speaking career and what you need to hear now? And before we jump in, make sure to go to speakernomics.com. That's where you can find the tips, insights, and knowledge to help you become a better speaker, build a better business, and get paid to speak. Mike, let's dive in. Number one, should we script our talks? We hear this so often with especially a lot of the folks that are in the, the theater and performance works that really script out a lot of things. But how have you seen this work for you with the either the people you coach or your own in your own Hall of Fame career? Yeah, uh, one of the things I see most often is they're told that, right? Script every word. And so they get into the script and lose themselves. It's one of the worst pieces of advice I see continually. And I'm just not talking beginner speakers. A lot of the people I coach are CSPs and they're not themselves on stage. I was recently coaching somebody and we hung out the night before the, the day of coaching. And the next morning I said, hey, I was watching your videos. Where's the person I was hanging out with last night? And, and it hit him. He was like, oof. But he's like, it's hitting me because I know it's true. And what happens is we they overscript, right? The world says overscript on this topic. Write every word and make sure you have it down. And I came from theater also, a theater background. The greatest director I ever had did the following, Shark. He said, drop the script. Play the scene. Let me see you know the emotion, the character, what you're trying to get out of the scene, then we can bring the words back in. And that was a life-changing moment for me as an actor to realize it's about the messaging. It's about the emotion. Don't get caught up in the words, actually. Then bring the words in. And so, yeah, play. Be willing to, and this doesn't mean don't plan. Some people hear me say this and they freak out. They're always saying, I'll live every word while you're up there. And I've had Hall of Famers pull me to the side and get upset with me over this and go, you, you shouldn't be saying that. And I'm like, it worked for me. And what's amazing is how many people I've coached that said, thank you for allowing me to have that option because they felt they lost themselves in scripting. And that when they've done their programs where they were more just top of mind, they felt better than they've ever felt from the stage, which means the audience is getting their best stuff too because they're in a rhythm, they're in a zone. That's what you want the magic to be. So it's allowing it. Now, now, with that said, there are people who should script every word because it's how their brain works. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just you got to know which one you are, right? And decide and follow that path. It is so important. And you've seen it. You've seen it from stage where you're watching somebody going, well, I just talked. I talk to them all the time. They don't, they don't talk that way they're talking on stage right now. They tend to be more and more ro robotic. They tend to be overblocked. Like I move here and move this hand. And then, you know, you're seeing a robot versus a person. How much of it do you think you actually script though? Let's say that a Shakespearean actor would script 100%. And maybe somebody that's not a perfect actor might get 90 to 100% of it correct in a speech. How much of it do you think you actually get that still tells the core of your story when you're kind of riffing and doing some things ad lib, but you're telling 80% of the story the same way? Yeah. So when it comes to scripting early on, when I'm putting together a program, I would estimate 30% scripted, 70% wide open. Now, keep in mind, there's a key to this that people don't like to talk about. So we're going to go there. If you're an expert, you should know your content well enough that if you know what you're going to discuss, you should be able to discuss it on the fly. If you're not an, a subject matter expert on your topic, why are you talking from the front of the room? Because those are the people who script every word. 
because they had to look up the topic to know what they're saying. They need the slide next to remind them where they're going next because they're not a subject matter expert. You should be a subject matter expert at some level of your topic if you're gonna get up in front of that room. And so if you are, trust your knowledge. You've got brilliance, trust it. Yeah, my brain would get fixated if I was at like 29 and a half percent, I would know it. And then I would just get stuck there for, for the rest of it. So I love everything <laughs> about that. Then let's talk about what you can or cannot say from the stage. We hear a lot of advice on selling from the stage, especially with coaches. A lot of the advice from all the, the Gary V's of the world who like to curse, nothing gets Gary V, but some people curse, some people don't. It, you know, there's different sensors with different groups. How do you sort of think about what you can or cannot say from the stage to that audience? Because everybody gets triggered by everything anymore. Yeah. Well, here, first of all, I work in a very sensitive topic, right? I am, yeah. for those who are listening, I'm often hired to speak to reduce sexual violence, sexual assault. So I'm working with the middle schools, high schools, parents, universities, and U.S. military, which means in that room, I could have an 18-year-old out of boot camp, I could have a 60-year-old general, and I'm not exaggerating, or admiral also in that room. So my audiences and my topic, triggering is a major concern. You do not want to cause harm to the audience. And here's a reality. You cannot avoid 100% the possibility of somebody being triggered. You can't avoid it. So the question is, how do I use my language? Not necessarily what are the words that I'm always using. So I'll give you an example. You could easily swear from the stage and in no way could somebody argue it's disrespectful unless you made it disrespectful, right? And so one of the things, I'm known for being clean. It's one of the reasons I get hired on my topic. I'm known as being a very clean speaker. However, I have no problem when somebody gets up on that stage and swears if it seems natural in rhythm and is appropriate with the audience. You have to know your audiences. There have been times with the U.S. military audiences and, and a few others where I've swore. And even myself, I was like, oh, should I have done that? And then I've had top leaders come up to me and go, you did exactly what was needed for our audience in that moment. Thank you. Because you're willing to say what other people weren't willing to say in the moment. And you realize it's, once again, my intuition in that moment knew this was the right time for this audience. And I trusted it. Right. And so I went with it, even though I worried a little bit afterwards. So be yourself up there is really the key. It goes back to where we started before. If you're sitting up there using words you would never speak in everyday language, I'm going to be able to tell you you're not real. The audience is way smarter, probably on a more subconscious level than conscious level of whether they're going to listen to you and connect with you if you're not authentic. And if you're constantly using words you would never use, you're not going to be in a place of a soulful rhythm of who you are. Yeah, I think about too, and I love the part about knowing your audience because I've talked about this before. My 100 years ago did stand up. The stuff that I could say in front of that kind of audience, I, I never carried over into keynotes because you never get right. booked again because I often went blue and uh, and it's just knowing the audience you're speaking to is so important, but talk about also with selling from the stage, yeah. how you approach that, because that could be books, that could be coaching, it could be a plethora of things. Yeah. And I've, I've sold everything from the stage over the years. And let me explain what I mean by that. We sell clothes. So we're, we're a little unique. We're, we're a mission-based speaker and our audiences love our mission. So we actually have t-shirts, boxers, hot shorts that they want when they, after they hear the program. So oh, different times in the years, we've sold those back in the room. In addition to selling books back in the room. So I have a wide variety of experience selling back in the room. I have never understood any hesitation to somebody selling back in the room if what you are selling is of value and if your speech isn't dependent on them buying it. That's the key. So if I'm not playing this game of, I'm going to give you eight of the nine keys, but without the ninth, everything's going to fail. The ninth is in the book. All right, that's bogus. They paid you to come and deliver. They did not pay you to come and sell book. They might have, some audiences will do that, but most of us don't get paid to sell the book, right? But saying, hey, if you've loved today and you want more, we have a book for you. Why wouldn't you want your audience to have an amazing resource to help their lives change for the better? So why wouldn't I want that? I've, I've even said, I've always questioned why NSA doesn't allow it. I wanna watch the best people sell from stage. If they got something that's going to help me, 
I want to see them do it and I want the resource potentially. So I'm a fan of if you want to. Now, with that said, nowadays, I give almost everything away from the stage. So I give my audiences all my books for free at the end of the speech. Uh, I do, we do them as ebooks and audiobooks, and we love that. It fits our model, it fits our mission. So this is a good example of what works for you. Where are you at in your career? It can be dependent on where you are in your career sometimes. Mm -hmm. So talking about storytelling, you mentioned something about the storytelling myth. Explain yeah. that, if you will. There's a couple of storytelling myths. One is you have to start with one and end with a more amazing one. <laughs> uh, you, you know, that that's the key to great speaking. And I've always found that intriguing because the variety of my audiences, I see everybody and every demographic imaginable and no one's ever cared about whether, and I've, I've tested this, whether there was a story at the end or not, if I end it with a powerful message, the story wasn't necessary. If my speech was solid enough, was a wow factor that that little comment at the end brought it all home, I didn't need a story there. You don't need a story to start your speech. I have actually found over the years, a question can be way more engaging than a story. It needs to be the right question, right? So one of the things that a lot of people struggle with, and I see this with my coaching clients, whether, whether they're CSPs, whether they're Hall of Fame, whether they're beginning, is they, make, they, they have a story that's gonna get the room's attention, but they fail to understand how to make the story the audience's story. And this is the other myth that's out there is that if you have to have the right amazing life story to really be a speaker. You have to have that signature story. That is not true. You need the story that allows the audience to come into it and can see themselves in it. That could be your, your pet dying, something that people go through in life. That could be getting pulled over by the police, but it's something that relates, but it's the way you're able to connect it to the audience so here's the biggest mistake people make with this shark is the following. They say, they, they go through their whole story. And at the end they go, now you might be wondering, how does climbing Mount Kilimanjaro relate to you? Well, I'm sure you've had your mountains in life, right? And the audience goes, right. The problem is you went all the way through your speech before you invited them in. It was never theirs. They're now trying to relate after the fact. What should have happened is early on in the story when you're saying, so I'm failing, I'm struggling. Have any of you ever been in a moment where you thought you got it and 30 seconds later, you realize you don't? If you've been there, yell been there. The whole room yells been there. Now they're in the story. They are part of the rest of the story. They're relating to when they've been there to when you've been there through the story not trying to reconnect at the end. It's really vital. So who are the kind of speakers that you coach? And I know you do some, some retreats and stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the fun part about doing this work is you get to work with people at all different levels. The last two people that have come here for a full day of coaching were CSPs. So these are highly successful speakers that want to just take it to another level or are looking for clarity. That is often the most common situation when people come to me. They either want to be more impactful or they want more clarity on how to have a more impactful business. One of the two, either their messaging and their marketing or their presence on stage. And they want someone who's willing to say the truth without holding anything back. <laughs> so they're, they're not looking for coaching that takes a half day for one realization. They want somebody to get right to, within the first hour, give me something I can walk out of here with right now by pulling it out of me. You know, like I said with the one person, hey, where's the person I saw yesterday, right? Being willing to have blunt, loving conversations because there can be blunt, hard hitting and that can actually make people not want to be with you or to be coached by you because it feels brutal versus I love who I am at the end of this day. One of my favorite things, Shark, is when somebody says to me, I found myself as a speaker and they've been speaking for years. But today I found myself. Everything, I was able to be this person I've always wondered if I could be. I, it's out now. And then what's really cool is you hear from two months later, I did the speech, that speech. I'm so more playful on stage. I'm so more of this on stage because they're themselves. It wasn't anything magical I gave them. It was helping them pull it out of what was already there. 
Then let's do a quick recap based on Mike's advice. Number one, when you think of scripting, Mike recommends a 30 to 70 script, no script split. 30% scripting, but it's in the 70% that you play with it. Find out what works for you, what works for the audience. And the biggest reason is that is that it has to reflect who you really are. Are you the guy or gal that someone hung out with the day before or a scripted actor that doesn't really reflect your character at all? Number two, in regards to what you can't say or can't say on stage, know your audience, do what is needed with the language for them. And if you're selling something, remember, as Mike sort of said, I'm going to paraphrase, they paid you to come and deliver and not to sell. But if it's part of the message and it makes sense, make it an offer. Really, when you think of selling, there's a lot of products that he just referenced, some that are free that people consider a resource, and then it becomes taboo if it costs a penny or more. So think about that. Make sure that you're providing real value. Number three, when you think of storytelling, a powerful message in Mike's eyes could be an ending. The opening could be a question. So many people say you got to start in on a story. Why? Because many people fail to make it part of the audience's connection in their story. The audience has to reflect and understand how it relates to them with that story. Did you connect the audience to the story and did you do it early? Mike, looking forward to seeing you at an NSA event soon enough. Any last closing thoughts before we dive out of here? Oh, absolutely. We'd love to invite people to, for two opportunities. One, you just heard me mention that we love coaching. I love coaching. And so we have the option that if somebody wants to do that, they work with me for one full day. They came out here and we dive deep all day. And we we spoil them and treat them here while they're out here. Uh, that's one option. And they can find all about that at soul, www.soulfulspeakers.com. And there's lots of information there. And then if they really want to go to a unique experience, we have a retreat just for speakers in Costa Rica, the only one of its kind in the world. And what I mean by that is half day learning, speaking, diving deep to your personal model, business, speaking strengths, weaknesses. And the other half, we're going in the jungle. We're going to hike to a waterfall and jump in one day. Another day, we're going to zip line. This is about filling your speaking skills, talents to the rim and then filling your soul the rest of the way, the rest of the day. Really unique experience. That's going to be at peak impactevents.com. We are, we are keeping this tiny, 10 people, 10 speakers, that's it. So if you're interested, peakimpactevents.com. Oh, I almost forgot. If they if they go there, we are giving NSA or anybody from this a, a huge discount by just typing in NSA on the code. It's going to take $1,000 off right off the top. So that is just for our NSA family. Well, great. Friends, make sure to join us at speakernomics.com and let your voice be heard. I'm Kenneth Shark Kenny, your host of the National Speakers Association's podcast, Speakernomics, and this has been another fantastic episode of the show. To everyone listening, thank you for the privilege of your time. And remember, Speakernomics is a podcast where you'll learn to speak, get paid, repeat. Attention all professional speakers. Are you ready to elevate your career? Join us at Influence 2024, the premier event of the National Speakers Association, happening this August 3rd through the 6th at the Gaylord Rockies Resort in Denver, Colorado. Connect with industry leaders, master your craft, and discover cutting-edge strategies to grow your influence and your speaking business. Now, whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, this event is designed for you. Now, don't miss out on this transformative experience and register now and be a part of something extraordinary. Register at influence24.nsaspeaker.org.